Tampa Mayor Jane Castor here speaking live press conference on coronavirus readiness here in the Bay Area. All right, is everybody ready? Okay, um, good afternoon, good morning. Thank you all for coming here. Uh, what we would like, oh, you can't hear? All right, is the, Okay. All right, we'll just talk louder. All right, good morning, everyone. Thank you all for uh, coming here. Uh, we just finished up a call with Congresswoman Kathy Castor uh, talking about the approach from the city of Tampa uh, dealing with COVID-19 and uh, better known as the coronavirus. Uh, I have the chair of the county commission, Les Miller here, and we have the chair of city council, Louis Vieira here as well. And then we have a number of health providers behind us, including Dr. Holt from uh, the county health department. So I want to um, begin by again saying that one, everyone needs to take the simple uh, precautions to avoid getting the COVID-19 or coronavirus. Everyone has heard those very simple steps to take. Uh, we know that the um, emphasis on this particular virus is that it the ease with which it is uh, spread. And so that is our concern. Here in the city, we're taking a number of steps. We are cleaning all of our public uh, facilities on a regular basis, as are a number of other uh, operations, groups, and businesses within the city. So again, individuals to take those simple steps. And if you aren't in that high risk category of the elderly or having uh, compromising health conditions, then you are not at a great risk from this particular virus if it is uh, caught. So I want everyone to remember that. And then also to have accurate information. It's very, very important. There is a lot of inaccurate information floating around out in the community nationally and within our own city. I received a couple of calls yesterday about um, incidents that did not occur. And so that information, uh, we need to ensure that we're providing accurate information and that all, all of our community is getting their information from an accurate source. And that can be the CDC, that can be the Hillsborough County Health Department, that can be uh, the state emergency management, or here locally at tampagov.net. All of our information is in English and in Spanish, and we would like everyone right at this moment, unless you're driving, to take out your cell phone and text Tampa Ready to 888-777. For Spanish speakers, Tampa Lista, 888-777. Seven seven seven. Again, it's very, very important that we have that real-time and correct, accurate information that we're providing to all of our citizens and all of our visitors. And speaking of visitors, clearly we depend a great deal uh, in the Tampa Bay area on events and on tourism. And so that is something that we have been in very close contact I have been personally in contact with Visit Tampa Bay, hotel associations, the venues, uh, the convention center, and a number of other individuals, ensuring that we're making the right decisions on a lot of these uh, larger events that we are scheduled to host. And there'll be an executive policy group meeting later, and I'll let uh, Commissioner Miller talk about that, but we are in discussions with all of our um, all of the individuals that are involved in uh, hosting these large events and then also with the groups that handle the incoming visitors and outgoing at the airport and the port in close com uh, conversations with Joe Lapano and Paul Anderson out at the port so very very important and again I want to say before I introduce the health providers what a great asset we have in Dr. Holt. I have uh, spent probably way too much time on the phone with him in the last couple of days, late at night, early in the morning, 
and he is on top of this situation here in Hillsborough County, and we're very lucky uh, to have him here. So I want to now go to the health providers who are each going to discuss a particular issue dealing with uh, health provision for our community. We have representatives from HCA, from Tampa General, from BayCare, and from Advent Health uh, here meeting talking about um, the uh, coronavirus testing and um, collections as well. So first up, we are going to have Dr. Peter Charvet. He is a chief medical officer with uh, St. Joseph's Hospital, and he is gonna talk a little bit about telemedicine and the capabilities there. Doctor? Well, thank you, Mayor Castor. We're uh, really grateful for your leadership and bringing us together today to talk about this very important topic. At BayCare, our uh, mission is to improve the health of the community which we serve, and we remain committed to that uh, mission, especially in this time of a public health emergency. Our efforts are really centering around communication, preparation, and assuring that we have plenty of points of access for patients um, who, who might be seeking medical attention. Regarding communication, I'll say our senior leaders are in regular communication with the Center for Disease Control and the Florida Department of Health. We're updating our teams, our providers, our frontline staff on the latest recommendations for testing, and uh, we're continuing to communicate um, with our employees and providers. We're also in regular communication with the other healthcare providers in our community and providing a, a coordinated and joint effort. We're also uh, spending a lot of time in preparation and one area is a, uh, uh, of special importance to us is supply chain and we're assuring that we have adequate supplies of personal protective equipment for our staff and physicians. It's very important that we keep our patients, visitors, our employees and our providers safe in this in this time and uh, having adequate personal protective equipment is very important, so we're staying on top of that. I really also want to emphasize the fact that at Baycare and St. Joseph Hospital, we're, we're committed to providing multiple convenient access points of care for patients who are seeking medical care. We have uh, hospitals, urgent care centers, primary care, but one option I really want to encourage the public to access is telehealth. We have a 24-7 uh, availability telehealth platform through Baycare Anywhere. You can access that on your mobile device, your smartphone, your tablet, and you can access this from a convenience of your home or work. It's a low cost option, especially if you have a non-emergent condition. Um, we recommend that uh, patients who have primary care providers first call your primary care provider to help direct you to an appropriate point of care. But keep in mind, telehealth is a good option so that we're not be bringing uh, patients who might potentially have infectious disease um, into our hospital unnecessarily. Uh, we really need to save the emergency departments for, the, for patients who have really acute emergent conditions. And if you have more of a minor symptoms and you're not sure uh, how to handle that, telehealth is a great option to have a, have a, a call or video conference with a provider who will assess your symptoms and provide treatment recommendations and will help decide if you need a face-to-face -face encounter. So we remain committed and engaged in this time of public health emergency. We'll continue to partner with our local health care providers, our, our local, federal, and, and uh, state governments and health officials and experts, and um, we continue um, to uh, remain engaged in this dialogue. Thank you. Next, we're going to have John uh, Corris and Dr. Lakshmi from Tampa General Hospital, and they are going to talk about their surge capacity. Um, thank you, Mayor Castor, for allowing us to participate. My colleague, Dr. Lakshmi, and I appreciate the invitation. Uh, Dr. Lakshmi is here with me to answer questions after the prepared remarks. Uh, Dr. Lakshmi is our associate hospital epidemiologist as well as the assistant professor of infectious disease at USF and has been leading our effort at Tampa General Hospital. First, I want to let you know that at this time, Tampa General has had, no, we have had no COVID-19 patients in the hospital at, at, this, at this time. However, we are fully prepared to care for our community even in the event of a patient surge. Tampa General is currently working on the ability to perform in-house COVID-19 testing of our team members, physicians, and patients. We've deployed our pandemic plan, which is three phases based on an increase in patients. Phase one, 
of the plan is that any patient who presents at our ER with symptoms consistent with COVID-19 is triaged and placed in an isolation room where they are evaluated and tested if they meet the criteria. If we see an increase in these types of patients, we will implement the second phase of our plan, which is that we will place patients in a dedicated contained unit for both evaluation and admission if necessary. So they'll stay in one location. If the increase in patients surpasses the capacity of this particular unit, we will implement phase three of our pandemic plan, which is to triage patients on our campus in a designated outdoor area. We also have a sister unit which will, which will act as overflow for patients if that need arises. Our team is well trained and we have an adequate supply of equipment including personal protective equipment such as N95 masks and our facility is well equipped to handle these patients with 81 negative pressure isolation rooms along with over 100 ventilators at the institution. TGH is also working closely with other local hospitals to coordinate efforts across the Bay Area. In an effort to keep our team members, physicians, and patients safe, we are limiting visitor access, including taking measures to decrease the number of entrances into our hospital. As recommended by the CDC, visitors who are ill or who have traveled to China, South Korea, Italy, or Iran within the last 14 days are not permitted in the hospital. We've placed signage at each entrance notifying our visitors of this policy. We're doing all of this work in partnership with the CDC as well as with the state and local Department of Health whom we're in constant communication with. I personally spoke with Governor DeSantis last week, participated in a roundtable with him. I also spoke with Mary Mayhew, the Secretary of Florida for Agency for Healthcare Administration. And they are, we, are, we are coordinating with them on a, on, a, on a daily basis. Last, we're committed to open, honest, transparent communication, both internally and externally, as this is an evolving situation. We will continue to provide real-time information to our team members, physicians, and patients and community about our preparedness, as well as COVID-19 updates and precautionary measures. Thank you very much. All right, next we're going to have uh, Dr. Robin McGinnis, who is a Senior Executive Officer, Patient Outcomes for Advent Health uh, West Florida Division. And she is going to come up and talk about um, best practices along with Dr. Chan. Thank you so much, Mayor Castor. It's, it's really um, great to be here with all of our healthcare um, colleagues. This is a very important issue, and for us to work together, is, uh, it's gonna give us the best opportunity to be able to minimize the impact of this. So for years now, everybody has told you to wash your hands. So for our community responsibility, today is the day that we have to do just that. The, the best way to spread um, this virus is by good hand hygiene, safe health practices. Be sure that if you are sick, you do not um, have close contact with other people. Stay home um, if you are ill, and that's gonna be the best way that we're gonna prevent this from spreading across our community. Um, we are doing everything that the CDC and the Department of Health uh, recommends to keep our healthcare workers safe in our hospitals. We have constant communication between the national level, um, the state level, and our local levels with the Department of Health and the CDC guidelines. We are implementing them and changing them as the, this changes um, fairly frequently these days. Um, our campuses are absolutely prepared to deal with this and our utmost responsibility responsibility is number one to keep you the community healthy and safe and to keep the healthcare workforce safe so we can care for the sickest of the sick. Advent Health has recently stood up a hotline, which is a 24-7 line that people can call for information. We recognize that there's a lot of information available, both on internet, um, on the web, et cetera. The intention for our hotline is to try to offload some of those more um, general questions that, that our community may have as it relates to the coronavirus to then save the bigger questions, the more critical questions questions for our um, direct health care providers. This is staffed by a nurse 
and the number is 877-VIRUS-HQ, and we encourage um, anybody to use that in addition to all of the other uh, references that are made available um, to provide uh, information to our community. Thank you so much. I think that all the residents of the Tampa Bay area can take great comfort in knowing that all of our major health providers here, uh, Tampa General, St. Joseph's Baycare, HCA, and Advent Health are all in constant communication. And not only communicating in a time like this, but exercising these, these procedures and these policies on a regular basis in our community as well. So when an event arises, we are prepared to make sure that we keep our citizens safe. And we do the same thing on the local level as well. Hillsborough County and the city of Tampa have been working together from day one on this particular issue. And it is my pleasure to bring up now the chair of the county commission, Les Miller. Thank you, Mayor. I think a lot has been said this morning from the mayor and from our health care providers. The only thing I want to add is that our emergency management center is at a level two. We do not anticipate increasing that unless something continuously happens in Hillsborough County. Today, the emergency management policy group, which consists of the three county commissioners, the mayors of our cities, uh, our county administrator, uh, the law enforcement being the sheriff and the police department uh, chief, uh, Hillsborough County school board chair, uh, and our first responders will be meeting to discuss what other techniques, what other emphasis we need to put in place and if decisions have to be made about what future events we will have to be looking at as far as will they go on or will they have to be uh, canceled. So those decisions will be made sometime today. We're going to give some time uh, when we start looking at uh, major events. We don't want to pull the plug right now. We want to make sure that we're making sure that everything is in place before we do that. So that will take place today at 1.30 at the Emergency Management Center on Columbus Drive. So uh, if you can, if you'll be there and you'll see what, the, what we'll be discussing at that particular point in time. But I want to thank the, the uh, hospitals that are here today for laying the groundwork of what's going on. Dr. Holt, uh, I don't know what to say more about Dr. Holt. I know he's staying up at night and working hard on this issue. He's been on conference calls all this morning. And we are working very closely with the mayor and the Hillsborough County. So uh, again, thank you. And uh, let's continue to do what we have to do. All right, we'll open it up to questions now. Already in process. Anybody else have any? No. In the hospitals in the four hospitals represented here. Well, we're in conversations with uh, the superintendent and the school board and those will be discussions that uh, continue at the executive policy group this afternoon the meeting and that will be a decision that will be made by the superintendent and the board but I know they are taking steps now again to clean like everyone else clean any public uh, locations and then also just reiterating that personal responsibility to ensure that you're doing everything you can to keep from contracting COVID-19 and then isolating in the event that someone does contract it. Mayor Caster. Go ahead. That still is the, the number one, uh, yes, to call that. And there are 1-800 numbers with the CDC. There's also a 1-800 number with the state of Florida. And again, all that information is on our website at tampagov.net.
We're in constant contact with the health department, and as the mayor said, people that have questions about this virus need to call the health department first and get triaged from that point. If they call our hospital at Tampa General, we will talk with them, we will inform them, and we will educate them. Um. Uh, I was going to add as well that the triage systems we have are very much in place to help prioritize but also acknowledge the concerns of the patients. So in the triage process, an infectious disease specialist also sees the patient and then we discussed the, with the health department what is going on and give them feedback so they can give us proper feedback on testing. And that yeah, we don't want to overwhelm the the um, health department as well, and they're certainly going to have to be prepared to uh, take this surge in calls. But every entity from health providers through telemedicine, through 911, all of those individuals should have the basics to go through with anyone who calls with questions or with concerns. It shouldn't be an automatic call the health department. You know, someone calls, they should be given assistance at every single level, and it could be ramped up to the health department. Mayor Pastor, you spoke about speaking to those major event venues, and um, what's the status on St. Patrick's Day? We're, we will be making the uh, decisions on event uh, cancellations at the meeting at 1.30. Those will be announced at that particular time. And as uh, our county commission chair said, you know, we've got the luxury of time on our hands for some of the larger events as well. And so we don't have to take immediate action for events that are occurring weeks down the road. So those decisions will be made uh, this afternoon. Anybody who would like your capacity for the, the testing I'll be happy to. So uh, testing came out uh, recently from an outpatient standpoint. And so we do have the kits in our outpatient clinics at Advent Health. Uh, but currently we're working on protocols to make sure that those protocols fall in line with the guidelines of the CDC and the Florida Department of Health. And once we can get those protocols in place, then we can disseminate that information effectively to all of our clinicians and our providers. Uh, in that way we can have a smooth to make it easy for our not only our for our providers but also for our patients as well. Yeah, I'll, I'll say it. But if I could just say Baker we have uh, testing available and we're following the CDC recommendations on the testing. I don't necessarily, I mean, Dr. Holt can speak for himself, but I don't know that we need to go eight days back and try to answer questions for that. Let's look at what's happening today and the, the steps that we're taking moving forward. I can tell you that Dr. Holt has been uh, nothing but communicative with everyone in, in this dealing with this particular incident. So if anybody has any questions for him now, other than what happened eight days ago, we'll be more than happy to answer them. I think everybody should understand they are recovering and uh, if there's any change uh, all we're hoping is for the best we will announce that when their medical condition is uh, appropriate but right now they are doing well and they're they're still isolated at home so that should tell you what their condition is all right one more from Jeff
check. Yeah, I couldn't. Do we have sufficient tests, test kits in the county right now to test the patients who meet the criteria for COVID-19? And after they're tested, what's the time frame on getting those test results back? Sure. Uh, there are sufficient tests for the current criteria. The looking forward is how do we expand the access? That's no question, and that is a priority. Right now, anyone with those meets those risk factors of increased risk for probability of being infected based on travel and some other factors, we can get tested. The more the tests are coming in, the slower the response, but generally we are seeing them myself within 24 hours. All right, thank you guys, appreciate it. Thanks guys.